Hey everyone, uh, Nathaniel Ruffle Jazz here from Nintendo Prime. No, I'm not on camera at the moment. Uh, I have to actually wait for a package today. I have a uh, new monitor coming in that maybe I'll show you guys about later, but I got a sign for it and I'm not really sure when it'll be here. It's sometime between now and 7 p.m. tonight, so I'm hoping it's here in the morning. So I don't have to sit up here uh, waiting for it all day. But that being said, I did want to make sure I got this video out because we have some important details to talk about here. Since Nintendo launched the new expansion pack service in Nintendo Switch Online, in particular with N64 games. Uh, there might be some stuff with Genesis games as well. We'll probably get into that a bit later. But let's just say that Nintendo maybe should not have launched this expansion pack yet. At least based on the issues currently cropping up. A few of them that to me are simply in excusable now before i get into these issues i will remind you we do have a giveaway going on right now for a few copies of metroid dread just click on the viral sweep link down in the description or the pinned comment we also have some more giveaways happening later on this holiday season to enter those you just need to be subscribed to the channel that being said let's get into this interesting n64 game issue on switch All right, so first off, we all know that there's been a lot of backlash over the pricing of uh, this. I know there's been some people that dismiss it. They break down the pricing by month. If you go, well, it's $50, you know, divide by 12, it's a few bucks a month. What's the big deal? Oh, it's, you know, it, you, when, when it's like $80, you know, on the family plan, well, you divide that between eight people, that's $10 a year or like less than $3 per month. I understand how people want to break it down and justify the cost, of course. They're not also taking into account that there are other services out there from other companies that cost the same or sometimes more, but happen to offer a lot more value, uh, making Nintendo's price points seem bad. And I think a lot of people understand the pricing is pretty bad. I mean, we've seen the dislikes on all of the Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pack trailers. It's very clear people are well aware. And based on polls I threw up on Twitter and YouTube, it's very apparent that there's a lot of people not happy with the pricing but for the 19 20 25 percent of you or so that are going to partake in this are going to purchase the expansion pack they are noticing problems so i got this article on screen right now from nintendo life uh and it says nintendo switches online n64 games need some work input lag frame rate issues and more specific problems being reported so let's get into what some of the problems that are being reported right now it says Nintendo Switch's online brand new expansion pack subscription has finally launched, giving members who sign up to the service access to a lineup of classic N64 and Sega Mega Drive, or for us in the United States, Genesis titles. However, according to some folks, the new service is having some teething problems at this early stage, with reports of input lag and frame rate issues among the noise. In addition to these more general problems, it seems some games also have more specific issues. As reported by our pals over at Eurogamer, Mario Kart 64 is having an issue related to saving ghost data, something that was required players to have an N64 memory pack back in the day and hasn't, it seems, had a workaround implemented in this emulated version. And there's a screenshot showing the game, game select no N64 controller pack detected to save ghost data, insert an N64 controller pack into the controller, which, by the way, you can't do this on even the Nintendo Switch Online N64 controller that costs 50 bucks. If you do have that, they actually covered up uh, the uh, slot that you would usually put a rumble pack or a memory card into. So even if you have original accessories or memory cards, you can't use them. Uh, and it's really weird because this specific issue with N64 in terms of Mario Kart has actually been fixed by a lot of hackers and emulators and, um, and, and ROM users on PC. So this issue isn't even one that uh, hasn't been worked around already by fans. And here's Nintendo releasing an official version for Switch that literally takes one of the primary features of Mario Kart 64 out of the game by not enabling any way to do it. So, oh, yeah, you can play Mario Kart 64 online, but you can't save your ghost data, which is really important for your time trials. Yeah, I this is yikes. <laughs> now, if that was the only issue... It is what it is. Nintendo will patch it, right? Maybe. Well, it's not. So Super Mario 64 is also missing a rumble feature. 
that appears in the Japanese expansion pack version of the game. So imagine this, Super Mario 64 in Europe and the United States is missing a fundamental feature that's present in the Japanese version. What the hell? <laughs> um, rather than being a specific technical issue, however, the Japanese version of Super Mario 64 is the Shindu one, which was updated with Rumble Pack support. So if you want that feature, it appears you need to grab the Japanese expansion pack app, which, yes, the Nintendo Switch is region-free, so anyone can get it, but then you're also playing in Japanese, so that's not the greatest thing. Um, there are some benefits, of course, to it, um, you know, not being the Shindo version. Uh, there, there, there's some stuff with speed running that people are worried about, but for general consumer use, I think obviously missing a rumble feature in the European and United States versions is yuck. Um, anyways, moving on, Sin and Punishment, we can confirm after playing it, is 100% having some control issues involving how it is mapped to its strafing. In the original N64 release, the strafe left and right actions were mapped to the yellow controller buttons, so the arrow buttons. And in this emulated version, these are replicated on the Switch's face buttons. However, the Switch version also has you pressing the right trigger to shoot, which then remaps the face buttons at the same time. This leaves the players being unable to shoot and dodge to the right at the same time. Yeah, and you know what sucks about this, by the way? If you're using a normal Switch controller? Um, guess what? They don't allow you to button remap. That's right, folks. You're not allowed to map your own buttons on your standard Pro Controller, third-party controllers, or obviously on the Joy-Cons. So the only way you could actually, potentially, hopefully, experience the game the right way is to buy the $50 N64 controller. And by the way, this control issue is not exclusive to Sin and Punishment. Nintendo, what are you doing? These are issues people have already fixed. People can emulate these games technically illegally, sort of, unless they dump their own copies. They can do this already on their PC for nothing. It costs them nothing. And these issues have already been fixed by fans. I, Nintendo, you're charging money for this. If you just gave these away for free, these are little technical issues that, you know, whatever. You didn't. You're charging a premium. Come on, Nintendo. All right, next up. Further to these specific issues, there are absolutely... Uh, there, I'm sorry. Further to these specific issues, there are apparently some frame rate and sound problems with Mario Kart 64. We played the game briefly ourselves and have experienced the soundtrack stopping and starting at random. Uh, that's stupid. So that's just bad emulation. So that's definitely an issue. But we've yet to notice any frame rate problems. So uh, one thing I want to notice, um, uh, note about any frame rate and or uh, more, more specific to input lag issues, is the original N64 actually had um, what I would say is some pretty significant frame rate issues. Frame rate issues of, of like 10 plus frames uh, between pressing a button and an action on screen with a wired controller, by the way. Like if that was Wavebird, okay, but with a wired controller... That always felt like way too much input lag. However, when you were a kid, you probably didn't care. Uh, and reality is that this input lag still exists with a lot of emulators today. Uh, but that is how the original games were experienced and played. So I don't know that input lag and stuff like that is really that big of a deal unless it's somehow significantly worse, which I think uh, Game Explain did a video on and showed that, at least from what they could tell, which, by the way, We'll have to wait for Digital Foundry because Game Explains methodology um, could have a lot of user error involved uh, versus some more technical applications like Digital Foundry will do. Uh, but at least from what they discovered, it didn't appear to be that big a deal. Um, frame rate issues are also being reported in relation to Star Fox 64 and Yoshi's Story. And Super Mario 64 and The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time are suffering from controller lag. Again, that is input lag. I don't know um, that that's actually that bad, but frame rate issues with Star Fox 64 and Yoshi's Story, that sucks. Now, the N64 had frame rate issues with some games in general. Those games, though, did not have frame rate issues on the original hardware. Yikes. Um, there's also some very obvious issues with reduced fog levels in some N64 games on Switch. Not so much a problem that's going to stop you from enjoying the games. This is more of an aesthetic issue. And as you can see from our images below, 
With Wii U on the left and Switch on the right, the lack of fog is making for some rather fugly vistas in places. Wii U emulation had its own issues in in this regard, so neither seems optimal. So essentially, the Wii U version was slightly better, but also not. Like, Nintendo... Here's my problem, I guess, with an issue like this. And really, most of the issues. um, Nintendo, these are your games. You are charging people money to play them. Same thing on the on old virtual console. If you can't be asked, literally asked, to get the emulation right of your own games, how can you keep asking people to spend money on it? It's baffling to me. They're your games. There's no excuse you can give to not emulate them properly. Anyways, we've also seen a few tweets regarding online performance. These tweets have been shot down by other players. We'll leave you with a few tweets flagging up various issues as being reported by folks online. And as ever, make sure to let us know in the comments of any problems you've been encountering with the new lineup of games as you get stuck into them in the coming days. So Blessing, um, I believe he works for Kind of Funny Games. I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure he works there. This con, the button mapping for the N64 on Switch is so terrible that I'm still in disbelief. There's no option to remap. Pro, Star Fox 64 is so gracefully, uh, ages so gracefully, it's ridiculous. But Star Fox 64 is good, but I mean, look at this, look at this, this button mapping. Look at this. Oh, so you have the left, uh, you have the left and the right for some reason here and here. Then you have A and B here and here. Oh, and then if you hold ZR. Then, 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 like the buttons on the left become the the uh, the triangle button. I, what is Nintendo doing? This is horrible. Let us button map. It makes too much stupid sense to let us button map. Yes, the current controllers are not set up the right way for N sixty four. But if you let us button map, we can at least set our own preferences for this. It's so ridiculous. Ugh, man. Ocarina of Time, N64 versus Wii VC versus Switch. Um, so let's see here. We got, uh, let, me, let me open this up quick. We got, uh, I guess this is N64. And then this one would be Wii. This one would be Switch. Oh, what do they do to Switch? What What's happening? Did they change out the entire water texture? Look at this. What is that? That doesn't even look like this doesn't even look like water anymore. Maybe from like the Super Nintendo days. I mean, look at this. This was this was Weaver. So Nintendo, you've done this better. What? Even the N64 blurry water looks better. Nintendo. I mean, you can't even see the. Tr- what are you doing? You're ruining one of my favorite games. Ridiculous. Oh man. And then uh, here's Nintendo advertising the expansion pack. Of course, and then someone responding, showing the N64 controller pack issue. So this person here, Gwyn Bleed Down, in the uh, comments noted some things. I'm copying and pasting a comment I've written a few minutes ago under another article. It seems more in topic here. So so far, a few features that have been posted on a website. Um, input lag, especially visible in Super Mario 64. Frame rate issues found in Mario Kart 64, Star Fox 64, Yoshi Story. Who is complaining about lag on the Sega Mega Drive collection? Um, audio reproduction lag, texture issues, weird key settings, missing detection of the controller pack. Um, for some of the screenshots I see, you get a total lack of fog effects and ocarina of time, missing objects, random crashes, and you pay for this. So, needless to say, Nintendo, you dropped the ball. You dropped the proverbial ball with this. You already, already were getting negative reactions um, to the price point and the strategy behind this and then you come out with what's essentially a broken product now forgive me for maybe not giving nintendo more benefit of the doubt that some of you guys might be willing to do or maybe some of these issues just don't bother you so you don't care but i will say this this is a company that highly polishes most of their releases right when you get a nintendo game there's often not going to be a lot of game breaking bugs usually not going to be major fps issues i know we have 
some exceptions to this. As an example, obviously, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, which by the DLC and the Definitive Edition clearly needed a bit more time for optimization and polish. Um, Breath of the Wild, which was amazing but had some frame rate issues on Switch during the porting process, probably could have used maybe a bit more time to sort out those issues. I don't know. But beyond all that, like Mario Odyssey, no problem. Platoon 2, no problem. Astro Chain, no problem. Like, in general, Nintendo's games don't have these kind of issues. They have such a high level of polish that the frame rate's usually pretty consistent, the input lag's almost non-existent, and it just ends up being a damn good time, um, unless, obviously, you just don't enjoy the games or enjoy the art style and all that jazz. Here's the thing. These games came out in the 90s. The 90s. And Nintendo can't get them right, but they want to charge you money? Look, I understand you get to play these N64 games online, and that's a cool feature, but you know what's more important than playing the games online? Being able to play them as they were intended to be played in the first place. Without that, without button mapping, so we could try to at least modify our controllers to, to, to be in a more comfortable use case, I, I, I'm just, I'm at a loss. Now, we haven't heard any complaints too much about the Sega Genesis stuff at this point. Maybe there's going to be some issues with that stuff. I don't know. Sega Genesis stuff has been re-emulated and repacked so many times. I kind of feel like at this point they've sort of quote unquote nailed the emulation on that front. Uh, and Nintendo probably didn't have to do a lot of work for that because again, you know, it, it, they're Genesis games. But N64, that's a problem. This is a problem, folks. This article, this article shouldn't need to exist. And this is beyond the fact. And I can't confirm this, so if someone wants to take apart their controller and find out, I would appreciate it. Um, I have been told by multiple people that they feel like the control stick on the $50 N64 controller that you can buy from Nintendo right now is the exact same control stick from when they were a kid. Um, there's nothing wrong with this other than the fact that those control sticks were poorly designed and would often break. Not you, we talk about Joy-Con drift. I'm talking about the control stick not even being able to be in the center while it's sitting there flat on a table physically because the control stick broke. This was a very common issue with N64 controllers, and I hope there wouldn't be an issue with these ones. And again, I don't have one in front of me to take apart and confirm if these are the more modern, you know, the modern sticks that everybody uses today, or if these are indeed the original. N64 sticks, which, and by the way, they're only like 11 bucks to buy a replacement part for, but still, still, um, it's just, it, 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 if that's true, it just kind of goes into the overall effort Nintendo really put into this N64 stuff. It, it appears, I don't want to say that it's lazy, I don't want to say they didn't put money and time and, and, and invest manpower into this, they just didn't do enough, and they're charging you a lot of money. This is not ready. This is just not ready. This expansion pack should have been delayed till next year. It's not ready. They should have just gave us the Game Boy games or something else that was easier to emulate than worry about trying to. Oh, it's holidays. Oh, we got OLED coming out. We better boost N64 online subs right now, or just wait. You got Splatoon three coming next year. You could have waited. You would have been fine. You you had games to push online subs next year. You could have waited. Because as is, I am beyond thrilled at the moment. That when I went to, to buy the service, because I mentioned I was going to buy it specifically because I'm a Nintendo YouTuber, I am thrilled that when I went to do it, I realized, you know what, the, 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 the little bit of money is still in the bank at the moment. Yeah, I'm going to hold on to that and maybe get this later. Well, now I'm pretty confident I'm just going to buy the Happy, um, Happy Home Paradise DLC for 25 bucks and just skip this expansion pack all together. I don't think there's anything I personally need to do for my channel that's going to justify any of this. There's, there, there, there's just, I, I can't justify it. Even, even, my, even me wanting to play N64 games online, like, okay, but the games themselves aren't working correctly. And it's not just like a single game. It's almost the entire lineup is having issues. Yikes. All right, folks. I'm Nathaniel RoboJazz from Nintendo Prime. And again, I don't want to hear it that I don't criticize Nintendo. I'm always critical of them when they deserve it. This is one of those moments. Come on, Nintendo. Do better. Catch you guys in the next video.